Dear students, nice to meet you through this social media. Children, every day you come to school from your residences. On the way, you come across different types of roads and we are looking for a shady place. On the way, we found a tree and uh, when we go near the tree, we sit under it and we relax. When the branches of the trees touches the branches of the trees on the other side, it forms like a tunnel, what you see in this picture. So we'll be very glad and we'll be tempted to walk uh, through this tunnel. Imagine when walking itself through the woods will be very pleasant. You, you think of a person who is mounted on a horse and he walks through the woods. So what we had was an imaginary experience whereas this experience was uh, experienced by one poet some hundred years back. Shall we uh, enjoy his experience through this poem stopping by woods on a snowy evening? Shall we uh, go through the poem students? Whose woods these are, I think I know, his house is in the village though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year, he gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sound is a sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Here is a pictorial representation of the snow clad or snow covered forests or trees. Let's know the sum and substance of the poem. The poet is mounted on the horse and he goes to, uh, to the countryside. It was late evening and the snow was falling from the clouds. He passes through dark woods. When he passes through the woods, he says that he knows the owner of the woods. But the owner doesn't know what is happening in, the, in his woods. The poet, being a lover of nature, stayed enjoying nature for a long time. Without a farmhouse nearby, he stopped his horse and uh, this made the horse confused and the horse was very doubtful why his master stayed uh, stopped there without a farmhouse nearby. But now, with no one around, the poet on his horse was left alone between the woods and frozen lake. The horse shakes its bell. Why? In order to make uh, the poet or in order to make his master aware of the reality. Here, the horse is like a reminder to the poet. Sometimes the members of the family and our teachers remind our responsibilities like that one such uh, motivator is the horse. Here, horse is symbolized as the poet's conscience also. The absence of the horse may leave the poet spend the night enjoying the beauty of the woods by staying there for too long. The woods are very beautiful and uh, the time was late night, so it was quite dark. Uh, and the trees were covering a larger area. Sudden change uh, appears in, in the mood of the poet. And he was reminded of uh, the promises to be kept by him. Uh, and uh, at this uh, moment, the poet is in a conflict, whether to enjoy the warmth, comfort and safety of, the, uh, of his hometown, or whether to stay here in the woods 
and to enjoy the beauty of the woods. So he is in a conflict. Uh, but uh, he was reminded of the responsibilities, he was reminded of the duties, even though he was uh, tempted by the nature to enjoy it again and again without any break, he was reminded of the commitments and duties, obligations through the reminder which is depicted here as horse. So he was, he, he say that uh, I have uh, too many miles to cover. So reminded by the horse, he is trying, he is getting ready to move away from the forests. Okay, uh, here is a pictorial representation of the poet Robert Frost. Whatever happens in our life, whether it is a happy moment or whether it is a, a, a sorrowful moment, everything goes on. The only thing we should do, we should act with a balanced mind. We should accept the happiness as it is. We should accept the sorrows as it is. So everything should go on. Let's see about the poet Robert Frost. Robert Frost was an American poet. His verse depends heavily on the language of the people. He was, uh, uh, he could be rightly called as nature poet and he is a modern poet, a lyric poet. He is known for his realistic depictions and descriptions of rural life. Rural life means village life. That He focused on the uh, behavior of the people living in villages. He has won four Pulitzer Prizes for poetry. Some of his famous poems, The Road Not Taken, Mending Wall, After Apple Picking, etc. Okay, let's see about the poem. This poem, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, is written in 1922 and it got published in the year 1923. Here, the main theme is the conflict between man and nature. That is the conflict between beauty and duty. See, when a man is very bored while doing lot of work, he has to uh, enjoy himself and uh, he can go with the nature, he can enjoy the natural elements. So when he concentrates more on nature, he may not fulfill his worldly duties and commitments. So he should strike a balance between uh, his admiration of nature and fulfilling his duties. This uh, brings about the beauty of the woods, that is the beauty of the forests. And it explains how an adult, because uh, during uh, uh, childhood, we won't have any stressful situations. We don't have, we won't be in uh, problematic situations. We won't get into troubles. Whereas uh, an adult may undergo lots of uh, troubles, lots of problems. So for that, he needs some sort of refreshment and uh, he goes to the nature, uh, thereby he forgets all his worldly duties. And here in this poem, nature is depicted as a tempting, something which kindles, uh, tempting and threatening force. Sometimes nature could be uh, like a disaster, then glossary woods, forests. For example, a cow is grazing in the woods. Queer, strange, not common. Uh, example, the sky was a queer shade of orange. Frozen, filled with snow. Frozen fruit drinks are served here. Harness, it's a strap by which a horse is tied to a cart or carriage. The horses were harnessed to the cart. Lovely, it's very beautiful. Example, it is a lovely picture. Farmhouse, a house on the farm owned by the farmer. The farmhouse is beautiful. Sweet, quick movement. Example, fire swept through the forest. That is uh, spreading uh, heavily, spreading in a fast uh, way. That is called sweep. Downy, a soft and fluffy. Fluffy means ve uh, very thick or very dense covered with soft hairs. Example, the baby's downy cheek. Flake, small tiny pieces or small particles. Example, flakes of paint are coming off the wall. So the room uh, needs decorating. What are the characters in the poem? I, it refers to the poet Robert Frost. 
the owner of the woods and the horse owned by the poet. Let us see about the places mentioned in this poem. Woods, it refers to the forest, village and farmhouse. What is the time mentioned here? It is the darkest evening time uh, during evening rays of the light could not penetrate or could not pass through the dense uh, forests or branches or leaves that could be a darkest evening that is one uh, view. The another view is it could be a rainy season or it could be December 21st which is the longest night of the year. So, what is the season mentioned here? It is winter. And what are the sounds mentioned in this poem? See, uh, as we told earlier, the poet entered uh, a forest in the late night where he could uh, hear no sound other than the sound of the harness bell and he could hear the sound of the wind. He could hear the sound of the snowfall falling from the clouds and filling the uh, woods uh, with snow. What the poem teaches? teaches us. So, uh, what could we learn from the poem? The peaceful atmosphere and the commitments and our duties always coexist. That is peaceful atmosphere will also be there in our uh, life whereas, the commitments will also be there. So, we should strike a balance. We should be and keeping promises. So, whenever you go to school, your uh, teacher will ask you, um, will you complete this uh, exercise? Have you completed this exercise? Now you will say, no, ma'am, because uh, there was no uh, electricity, there was no power supply, so I couldn't complete the homework. And uh, naturally, miss, definitely uh, tomorrow I'll do this, miss. Uh, I'll finish off this homework tomorrow, miss. I'll show you uh, the homework, miss. So, this is uh, you will give a consoling reply and uh, the main thing is you have to keep that promise, you have to fulfill that promise, you have to do what you have said earlier, you should not break your promise. That is on the next day when you come to school, uh, before she asks or before he asks you the homework, you should show the notebook, Miss, uh, I have completed the homework. So, this is what keeping promises. So, uh, in life also, we, we should have the capacity to keep the promises uh, we make and traveling miles. So, traveling miles means um, it could be the distance to be covered. Uh, as in the poem, he has the poet has to cover a long distance, but in our life we have to uh, move from one phase to phase. As uh, Henry Van Dyke in his poem Life says, let me but live my life from year to year. We need to uh, live our life happily, uh, whether we face a, a difficult situation or whether we face a pleasant or happy situation, we should live our life uh, to the fullest. Then the poet is in a difficult situation as how to decide whether to stay there in the woods or to leave for his place or to leave for his hometown. This we already uh, dealt, he is in a conflict. Uh, in the last stanza of the poem, uh, this conflict is mentioned and uh, he is in a conflict whether to stay there in the woods, uh, enjoying thereby enjoying the beauty of the woods or to go to, the, to his hometown and look after uh, his work, his remaining work, his pending work or to fulfill his duties. So, the next point what we, what we could learn is seeking solace. Solace is a a sense of comfort, uh, a feeling of comfort, a feeling of relief uh, from nature. Uh, when we are one with nature, we forget about uh, even our own self and uh, we forget about all the problems. Uh, we forget about uh, the in, uh, atmosphere which is around us and we uh, concentrate and only on uh, enjoying the beauty of the nature. So, seeking solace or from nature is one of the major themes in this poem. So, let us uh, see about uh, the explanation of the first stanza. Whose woods these are? I think I know. His house is in the village though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. 
Here, the poet says, when he is uh, walking, when he is traveling, uh, when he is riding on uh, on the uh, on his horse, he says that I know the owner of the woods, or I know to whom these woods belong to. His house is in the village, though. Uh, though he is not here with me, I know his house is somewhere in a distant area, distant uh, place in the village. So he will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. The owner of the woods is taking rest in his house and he will not see me, he will not notice me who is uh, uh, standing in his woods. To, uh, to enjoy or to, uh, or to take uh, rest. So he won't, um, he won't know who is there in the woods and who is enjoying the beauty of the woods that he is not uh, aware. Next stanza, my little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near between the woods and frozen lake the darkest evening of the year. So here, uh, he, the poet says, my little horse. So whenever, when someone or when something is very close to us, we would say, it is my book, it is my pen, uh, he is my father, he is my friend, or, uh, and uh, he is my teacher. So likewise, when, when we share a close relationship with someone or something, we use the word my. So here also the poet says, my little horse. So that shows how close or how dear, how he loves his horse very much. Uh, my little horse must think it queer. Queer means, uh, what's the meaning queer? It is not common, uh, uh, sorry, uh, it is not common. Uh, that is, it is very strange. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. So there is no farmhouse here uh, near the woods. The horse is thinking to itself why his uh, owner stops there, stops in the middle of the woods without a, a farmhouse to take rest between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. So here the horse is personified, is given uh, the qualities of a human being and uh, it, it has a thought process, it is able to think. So uh, the poet as well as uh, his horse is, in, the, is uh, in between the woods, in between the forest and the frozen lake, the lake which is, the lake which is, uh, uh, which is full of ice. And uh, it, it was the darkest evening of the and year. Its explanation. The darkest evening is uh, when the sun's rays couldn't pass through uh, the dense forests. It could be termed as darkest evening and uh, uh, it could be uh, on December 21st. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. So the horse is shaking its bells in order to uh, alarm, in order to uh, make aware of the poet uh, why he is, uh, he is there, he is there, he stays there for a long time uh, to enjoy the beauty of the woods. So uh, and at the same time uh, it asks, it cannot speak in our language. Mm, it can't say anything in English or in some other languages. So it uh, speaks, it uh, conveys what it wants to do uh, in its own language. And so it shakes its uh, bells. So uh, shaking the bells means uh, it asks uh, the master, uh, have you committed, have you committed any uh, mistake or uh, have you taken a wrong path? or uh, whether there is a problem. So uh, this is what the horse is asking its master the, or the poet. The only other sound is a sweep of easy wind and downy flick.
So um, the silence in the forest is replaced by the sound of the wind and the sound of the uh, falling snow uh, in addition to the sound of the harness bells. So the entire uh, forest, entire wood is silent. Fourth stanza and its explanation. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. So here the poet uh, gives a wonderful uh, description of the woods. He says that the woods, the entire forest are lovely or very beautiful, very dark, dark and since uh, since it's uh, late evening and deep, deep it co covers a larger area. But I have promises to keep. So here is a sudden change in his mood. He is uh, reminded of the promises. He is reminded of the duties uh, he has to do. He is reminded of the obligations he has to uh, fulfill. So he says, but I have promises to keep. So, and miles to go before I sleep. So, I need to cover a longer distance before I could take rest, before I could go to bed. And, and miles to go before I sleep. Here, uh, before, I die, before he dies, he has to accomplish, he has to uh, execute many duties and he has to fulfill all his commitments. So here is an explanation of the last two lines and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. So here the poet enjoys the scene for a long time. Uh, but uh, he is reminded of his uh, duties. He has other responsibilities in life. He has to go a long way before he sleeps. He, he, he has to travel long and he has to cover a longer distance before he sleeps. He has, so he has to move on. So there is no, um, that needs uh, no uh, longer break. So he has to move on. He has to continue his journey. Here the poet repeats the last line to attract the attention of the readers. These two lines indicate the covering the remaining distance and fulfilling the duties of the word. Uh, here sleep refers to the uh, depth. So as we all, we in our uh, real life have many things to look at with surprise. We may wonder many things, we may admire many things and we have many things to enjoy. Uh, but in most cases we cannot uh, uh, simply enjoy because we have to do uh, many things in our short lifespan. So we have to move on as life goes on. Here is a small recap. Uh, who is the speaker? Robert Frost. On which is a poet mounted? Horse. Does the poet know the owner? Uh, yes. Where is the house of the owner? In the village. Who won't see the poet stopping in the woods? The owner of the woods. Which gets filled up with snow? Woods of the owner. Were the poet and his horse accompanied by anyone? No. They were alone in the forest. Was there any farmhouse near? No, there was no farmhouse near. How did the horse feel when the poet stopped? The horse felt very strange, very queer and very odd. Where, the, uh, where were they stopping? Between the woods and frozen lake. What was the time mentioned in this poem? It was late evening uh, and so it was becoming so dark. What was the season? It was winter. What does the horse symbolize? The conscience of the poet. Who shakes his bells? Horse. What does the shaking of the bells denote? Whether the poet has committed a mistake or whether he has chosen a wrong path. What atmosphere prevailed in the entire woods? Calm, silent and peaceful atmosphere. What were the sounds heard? Sound of the harness bells, sound of the winds and sound of the falling wind snow. Describe the woods as depicted in the poem. The woods are lovely or beautiful or wonderful, da uh, dark, dense or thick and deep, 
covering a larger area. Who has made promises to keep the poet? What is the line repeated in this poem? And miles to go before I sleep. First stanza, the rhyming words are no, though, snow. The rhyme scheme is A, A, B, A. Then second stanza, rhyming words are queer, near, year. Rhyme scheme B, B, C, B. Third stanza, rhyming words are shake, mistake, this poem flake. Is rhyme scheme A, C, C, B, C. Fourth stanza, the rhyming words are deep, keep, sleep. Rhyme scheme is D, 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 D. The learning outcomes, uh, learning outcome six, that is the students have to observe the stress, tone and intonation to recite the poem. Then learning outcome 22, the students appreciate the literary devices in the poem. These out learning outcomes are achieved by studying this poem. Literary devices, personification, attaching human characteristics or qualities to something which is not human. Uh, in this uh, poem, we find he gives his harness bells a shake. So he and his that denote uh, the horse. Imagery, sparking or kindling the sense organs. Here sound imagery we have uh, harness bells, sweep of easy wind and downy flake. Visual imagery, woods fill up with snow, little horse, frozen lake, woods are lovely, dark and deep, miles to go. Repetition and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Summary of the poem, one snowy evening, the speaker rides on a horse into the deep woods where there is no passers-by. He stops in the woods and he knows the woods belongs to a man whose house is in a village. He feels peaceful and appreciates the beauty of the woods in winter. His horse must think it's strange to stop in that dark place between the woods and frozen lake. The speaker hears the shaking of the horse bells as a sign to ask his owner whether there is something wrong. The other sounds he hears are those of wind and downy flakes. Although the woods are pretty and pleasant to him, he has to keep going because he has the responsibility to fulfill his promises and execute his duties. Thank you students.